Hello, and welcome to the Inside EVs podcast for September the 25th, 2020. This is episode number 25. Today, we'll be talking about Tesla's battery day, plus the Plaid Model S, the official launch of the VW ID4, and California looks like it's going to ban internal combustion cars. I'm Dominic Yoni, Inside EVs editor and Inside EVs forum monitor. Joining us today, we have Tom Malogny, long time and multiple EV owner and Inside EVs editor. We also have Martin Lee from the EV News Daily podcast, available on all your usual podcast platforms. And of course, we have Kyle Connor from the Outer Spec Motoring and One Lap YouTube channels. He also puts together the super awesome videos for the new Inside EVs, Inside EVs YouTube channel. Go subscribe and tap that bell icon for notifications. So welcome, gentlemen of the panel and ladies and gentlemen of the audience. Uh, see, what do we have? Charged up in our driveways today. Kyle, I understand you have the e-tron. Right. So I have a Audi e-tron in the driveway right now. Uh, that's not mine. That is my friend Nick's. Audi didn't have any in the press fleet. Uh, so we had a viewer of the channel of Inside EVs and Out of Spec reach out, say, hey, borrow my e-tron. And uh, so I have it for about two weeks. And what else do I have? I have a Zero SRS in the garage. And right. yesterday... I had another e-tron and an Energica to compare to the Zero. So lots of EVs flying around, lots of videos making tons of drag races, but it's been tons of fun. Motorcycles, I love it. And you also did like a 70 mile an hour test this week with the e-tron? Right, that was crazy impressive actually. I did the 70 miles per hour test in arguably the worst uh, e-tron for it because it's the max trim with the big heavy massaging seats and double pane glass. Um, and it had uh, you know the 21 inch giant wheels on it and it still got within Tom, I believe it was it 7% of its EPA? Yeah, it, 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 you, you hit 188 and the EPA is 204. So I think that's 93% of the uh, EPA rate range. Good job. Yeah, it's crazy impressive. Um, actually, I would say it did better than I thought it was going to do. And um, uh, yeah, 188 miles in the e-tron. It was a very comfortable range test. Most comfortable range test to date. <laughs> and it's EPA rated for 205 miles. Is that right? Yeah, 204. 204. Yep. 204. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So that, that was not too bad. Hey, Tom, did you have anything this week? Um, I, I have not had uh, anything this week. I will be doing a uh, charging, zero to 80% charging on a BMW i3 tomorrow. So I'll have that on the show next week. Just want to comment quickly on Kyle's uh, great job with the e-tron range test. Um, one of the things that is notable is that while the car performed Better than I thought it would. Be, I was guessing like 170, 175. Actually did better than what I thought it was. That had a 2.3 mile um, uh, per kilowatt hour consumption rate, which is by far the worst we've ever seen on our 70 mile range test. Now, th that's fine. It's a big, heavy SUV. Uh, it's for comfort and, and uh, luxury. But it is, it, it is important to note that Audi did a great job with the e-tron, but it is one thirsty electric vehicle. And it doesn't really, people don't really, I don't think customers really mind that they're paying more for, uh, say, to drive that 100 miles than they would a Tesla or another electric vehicle. But the problem is it's got this huge battery pack, 95 kilowatt hours, and it only, it doesn't even go 200 miles on the highway. That's the problem with the consumption, not that, oh, I'm spending more money on electricity. So, uh, you know, I, Overall, I love the e-tron, but Audi's got to figure out a way of getting that uh, more efficient so that they can squeeze more miles out of the battery pack. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see how long they actually use that platform for electric vehicles now that they have the MEB platform up and running and uh, you know products mm -hmm. coming up on with that platform. Um, okay, Kyle, you also had the uh, Tesla Model Y performance this week, didn't you? You did a one lap. Yeah, that was actually last week. But yeah, we had it set live this week, okay. a Model Y performance that was stock, did very well. Uh, in the coming weeks, we have the off-roading overlanding Model Y that I did a one lap in, which is a lift kit on off-road tires being you know, skidded around the racetrack. It's really funny. Uh, but coming up on Monday, Dominic, I think it is Monday. I sent it to you. It is a Model 3 Standard Plus for one lap of the track. So lots of EVs coming up. Of course, e-tron, Nissan Leaf, whole bunch of stuff that I've been testing. It's all been skidded around the track for one lap. 
Right on. All right. So let's dive into this. Uh, it was a pretty big week all around. Uh, of course, the big news is Tesla's uh, battery day extravaganza. Uh, so finally, Tesla had its big battery day. There was uh, quite a bit of uh, great sounding news to come out of it, but there was also some, uh, there's still some disappointment. Uh, there was no announcement about new tech already being put into existing vehicles and the main consumer uh, product announcement, the Model S Plaid, is still a year away when many thought it might be in production now wow. or ex extremely soon. Uh, basically, though, what we learned is that the Plaid Model S can be reserved now and they intend to add a smaller $25,000 model in a few years. But the big thing, of course, had to do with battery days or had, had to do with batteries, hence battery day. Uh, essentially, they laid out a path to increasing a, a 54 increase <laughs> um, to increasing range about 54 percent, and also seeing a 56 dollar per kilowatt hour decrease. So Elon recently spoke about achieving a 400 watt hour per kilogram uh, mark in in cell energy density in a few years, and that was reiterated. So that does seem like a medium term target it, uh, to achieve longer term goals like the three terawatt hours of cell production by 2030. They've basically rethought the entire cell process from dirt to driving. Uh, I mean, everything is addressed from the source of the lithium, the cell architecture and the process to manufacture it to the factories. Um, well, and speaking of 2030 vehicle production wise, I think it's important to note that they're aiming for like 20 million cars or so by the year 2030. So that's, that's kind of nuts. Um, so, but we'll talk about the cars in a bit. But first, Tom, uh, what what struck you as the most interesting or important thing about these new forty six eighty tablet cells that they're that they're make, coming up with? Okay, so um, we talked about this last week, trying to um, uh, figure out what was going to be revealed, and you asked that same question: What are you uh, most excited about? And uh, I'm I'm, I'm going to be consistent with that. What I what I was really looking to hear and we found out was, are these tablet cells, um, which would save a ton of money and make them more efficient? They are. Um, were they going to be cell to pack structure rather than inside modules? They are. The cells are actually, um, we learned, going to be a structural part of the vehicle. Um, which is, 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 is pretty amazing. Uh, now there's, there's positives, there's negatives to that. Now the fact that, um, these new cells are going to have be five times more energy dense. They're going to increase range by 16%, uh, six times more power, and 14% less money dollars per kilowatt hour. That is enormous. They cost less to manufacture the the the, the street. The they'll be able to streamline the production uh, facility. I mean, this is all. It has rippling effects across everything Tesla does, and, and, and that's amazing. One of the things that is a little concerning is, since the, these are actually structural and part of the, the, the structure of the vehicle, it sounds like the battery pack won't be replaceable. Uh, so, um, you know, that could be some, uh, how, I don't know how Tesla's gonna deal with that. Uh, will they just give you a new car if, uh, you know, the, there's a problem with the battery a year into ownership? that that's a little unclear but the fact everything else about it is 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 fantastic now it's not the first time that manufacturers have claimed the battery pack is a an integral part of the structure of the vehicle many of the manufacturers now with these skateboard designs are designing the battery pack to be an integral part of the structure but it they're removable still it, it appears as though what tesla's doing is is this thing is you know is built into the vehicle it's it, the rigidity of the vehicle depends on it and it won't come out. That's at least my take on it. I could have misinterpreted that. And um, that's that's a question that I have. But overall, this the big story for me, it wasn't that they're, you know, experimenting with silicon and, uh, you know, going to be uh, that there's uh, enough lithium in the Nevada deserts to, to electrify the whole U.S. fleet. Um, it was it, these cells. That's what it comes down to. And I, I it's I just love that Tesla is just, you know, it, it, all the other OEMs are kind of saying, hey, Cadel and LG Chem, what do you got for me? Samsung SDI, what, what's the best we could put in our car in uh, in, in four years? Um, and Tesla's just like, hold my beer. Like, like, great, we need to work with you guys, but we're not waiting for you to, 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 to make these breakthroughs. We're gonna do them. And uh, I mean, this is no small story. This is really something that 
they're coming out with something like this that appears to be so much better than what el- what other manufacturers are going to have. And this is this is here. We're, we're talking, you know, they're already making these cells. Now, they're not going to be able to make them in volume for a couple of years, but this isn't, oh, look what we'll have by 2026. No, they're making them now. This is this right. is this is big news. Well, they're going to have to put these in. Well, the Cybertruck comes out next year, right? And, so, and this is going to be in the Cybertruck. And I guess the Model S Plaid? I was going to talk about the cars a little bit later, but yeah. I suppose it would have to be in the Plaid if they're going to get that kind of range and performance. But that's going to require really a totally redesign because these these won't fit in the Model S's existing battery pack. It's not tall enough. So That's right. Know, are, are they going to? That's right. Are they going to re- redesign the pack, or like you said, because like the new the new vehicles uh, coming up, they're going to do that one one piece um, body structure, uh, the casting. They've they've developed a new alloy just so they could make these huge castings. So the whole front of the vehicle is like a single casting, and the whole rear of the vehicle, which they're doing now. Oops, my hands are huge. Uh, <laughs> which they're doing now in China. You know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I like the audio <laughs> listeners to the podcast version are going like, whoa, where did that come from? But if you have to be watching the YouTube video, you don't understand right. that. <laughs> um, so anyway, so, so yeah, these two huge castings are going to be, you know, connected get together by the middle piece, which is essentially the battery, which is, you know, all the cells glued into place between these two plates. And it's like, so there's like three pieces to the main structure of the car. And like you said, I don't know if is a battery even removable. I don't see how it could be. And then again, and so we have this uh, Plaid Model S coming out next year. I'm not convinced that it has the new cells, but the but the Cybertruck does have have to have the new cells. There's no way they you know has to have this new what we call this cell to pack or cell to cell to vehicle. Yeah. Sell yeah, car, C to C technology. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure with, but how do they then get? Uh, well, I, I know Tesla probably just threw out that number, 520 miles of, of range without the new cells. How do they achieve that? No, they can't. They can't. Not without putting more cells in and making yeah. the car. Well, even there, even the the, the original cells, what are the 2650s? Um, they they've been, they've improved over time, so maybe they can put 125 kilowatt hours in of those cells. I don't know. Well, look at Lucid Air; they're not using any of these fancy dancy right. cells, and they're getting 517 miles of range. Right. And I swear that Tesla just put 520 to be three better right. than Lucid. They don't know how they're going to get no. there. There was no conversation. Elon just said, "Make the presentation better, and we'll figure it out next year." Yeah, no doubt about that. Um, but yeah, could they do it without? Putting in the new cells, oh, I'm not so sure. I think that's why they delayed it. Because if you remember, Elon said that the Plaid was going to be, uh, well, initially it was this summer. Then he backed right. off and said it'll be the end of the year. Then they revised it and said it'll be fall. And so I think everyone was really surprised to have that that model put back by a year. Of course, the, the, the pill was slightly sugared by, but you can pre-order one now if you want to so right. they did have some positive news but I, I don't know but then again if you try and join those dots up but then listening to what he said which is the pilot plant will be in one year's time ten making gigawatt hours, yeah. Se- yeah 10 gigawatt hours which i mean isn't that crazy like that is a pilot plant which is right. in theory not to scale well it's not scaling uh but it's 10 gigawatt hours which makes it already one of the biggest gigafactories in the world so um uh so maybe they will have maybe when they say the pilot line will be in a year's time ready maybe what he was talking about was the yield at 10 gigawatt hours because they they can't all be you can't make 10 gigawatt hours of test cells (laughs) you know you can't then make them and then recycle them and make them and recycle them so they will be doing something with them and hopefully they'll be thinking well we're going to have enough of them to make a small run of very expensive model s's um, and will they be in any of the other cars? Now, oh. I, I, I doubt it. It must just be that car only. Yeah, well, they're making them now. So, that, you know, I just I think they probably have a huge, uh, very high scrap rate right now. So they have, there's still some problems to work out. But I think they're making, they're in production now. So the good cells that they can actually produce now will, I guess, be saved up for 
test vehicles and, and mm. mules and things. And it hopefully as production scales up, even at the pilot plant, uh, they'll have enough supply to begin making this hybrid truck because that's, you know, they need, as soon as that Texas factory gets up, they need to start, you know, churning out the, churning out the metal. But this, uh, this simply going to the 4680 form factor and this tabless design and this larger, uh, jelly roll, as they call it. That's just that's a sixteen percent increase in range on its own, without right. anything else. And so, even if they took today's technology, which we know they're not, but like today's anode and cathode material, and integrated it into the vehicle the way they are currently by just bolting it up underneath the Model S, because the Model S is still technically swappable the way the car was designed. And so, yes. um, that would be a sixteen percent range increase already which is which is sizable but as you say then you go into this this all of that those five steps then 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 you would think well that's the only way that they can achieve that 520 miles but the performance of it as as well so yeah all those questions have been running through my mind like the video they released of the laguna seca lap was that using the first batch of these cells in the car that we didn't see um the good you know some of the good batches all of those questions running through my mind, thinking, like, how, how far advanced are they? Was this, you know, Elon got this reputation of being on Elon time, of, of always over-promising and under-delivering. And then with the Model Y, he flipped it on its head. And and that the Model Y came so much quicker than anybody thought. And so I've been sitting since battery day with this thought of, you know what, maybe, maybe he's under-promising with this. Because it... it there was too many times in that presentation where he was like, yeah, but it's not really working right at the moment. And uh, maybe it's three to five years away. And I just don't know whether he wants to not really tip off the competition of how far along they are. Yeah, but it's, I feel like they've left a lot of questions unanswered during this whole person. And it's a great presentation. If you haven't seen it, definitely go track it down on YouTube. It's up on uh, the Inside EV's uh, website. And it's just it's just amazing that they you know go over all the different components of the cells, you know, the, the anodes, the cathodes and the materials inside them and how they're, you know, like they want to do a silicone anode instead of graphite. So that the, the problem traditionally with silicone, uh, silicon in a, uh, in an anode is that it, when you, when the, uh, lithium ions travel through it into it, that's, you know, what happens to intercalculate with the, uh, with the anode, it swells up. All these ions go into the anode and it swells like four times. And then, you know, then they, they, they leave and then it shrinks and that breaks down over time. So what they want to do is like, uh, the, the silicone, yeah, silicone anode have, uh, an elastic ion conducting polymer coating, which is integrated into the electrode with a highly elastic binder, and electrode design. So that basically they're designing the electrode to just go with the flow of the swelling of the silicon and you know the I don't know. It's uh Well it's that a, was that was the that was the biggest chunk of the range increase. So when they were talking about the range the the, the fifty four percent range increase, which is just <laughs> it's stunning. Hang on a minute. Right. Fifty four percent. The the biggest chunk of that, the biggest of the five things they were uh, they were going through was the new anode design. So, again, like you say, how much of this technology can be woven into existing cell production? Because, of course, the form, like when we talk about form factor of the cells, the two different sizes, the 18650s and the 2170s, simply refers to the size of the packaging of the, the, the shell uh, casing. Uh, and so the chemistry in that has changed a lot over the years. And, and I was yeah. guilty sometimes of thinking, oh, well, they haven't, you know, I was calling it the, the 18650 and the, and the Model S and the Model X. And, and by implication saying those batteries haven't got better since they launched the cars. And of course, they, Tesla point out, no, along with Panasonic, we have improved those, the, the chemistry and the design of those cells incredibly over the course right. of those, those cars. And so even with this anode technology, that was a 20%, in, that was 20% of the 54%. So even on its own, you're going to get yourself a chunk of miles. Right. Yeah, it was, I found it very interesting. And, and the cathode as well, they want to do like a high nickel con, uh, cathode, but not just, they, they want to do like a nickel only or no cobalt for like high energy uses like the semi and cyber truck, which, you know, there's a cyber truck again. So it needs, the cyber truck is going to need that, you know, high nickel content battery. But 
to avoid like running into nickel shortages because there's only so much nickel around, there's they're also pursuing you know iron uh, for some markets and some vehicles, and also a, a nickel manganese manganese uh, uh, chemistry for like uh, I guess the Tesla Model S and three and Y, and and saving just the pure nickel cathodes for the uh, you know distance real where it's really really important like the semi and, and cyber truck. Mm. So, and, and so go ahead where do you do you guys I've, I've tried to find this in the last couple of days but they didn't specifically address charge speed that there wasn't a headline slide that right. said and your car will charge in five minutes and they they purposefully kept that away from us but i've looked into this and i can't find a kind of a definitive answer do you guys have any insights into what these changes mean for because the heat dissipation is meant to be the big thing with using the form factor the technology changes right. the way they're going to package it the, the integration into the car all of those things are meant to sort out a lot of the thermal issues and people well, have kind of said to me well that means they'll charge a lot faster right well closer to close to the beginning of the presentation they had a big graph in the background and you see this big line going up he was talking about the form factor uh the problem with the form factor being so large is that this is a heat heat dissipation but then you saw that line, but the, you know, fall down, and he, and he says, "Well, but we, we've uh, we've conquered that basically, you know. So it looks like they've got around the, this, the cell design with the plate on the bottom, plate on the top, you know, dissipates heat quite well because the electricity isn't it's not flowing through a you know a very small part of the cell. It, you know, it's going there's a, a lot more connections in there." Anyway, it should be. Uh, I think the headline that we efficient. didn't get was, which and it potentially is, and your cars will charge, or it'll hang on to that peak rate right. a lot, a lot more. That just wasn't that wasn't overtly right. said, and so I wonder how much of a big deal is this? And I think it, I think it could be quite a big deal in terms of allowing smaller packs to charge at the faster rates. Well, someone I remember seeing a comment somewhere that they someone had calculated that they could get they they could increase charging speed up to a megawatt or something, which is what the what the, uh, the semi truck needs, mm. um, but I don't know if that applies to like the cyber truck or you know. I really wish they had have said something about charging speed. Kyle, did you hear anything about that? No, there was nothing said about charging speed, uh, and and really, I think uh, that was my biggest disappointment. Everything was great, cool that they have a roadmap. There's nothing tangible for normal people out of this entire presentation. Uh, you know, we we did the live stream. We had fifty four thousand people watch with us on the live stream. It was amazing, and uh, those that were there can can recall. I read a text from my dad in real time, who's been on wall street forever and he said look no one will understand this the market's going to go down and it did and that's the problem nothing's flashy even like just give us something that maybe owners can understand which is you know you'll see 350 kilowatt charging i don't know just throw out some number to make us have something to talk about uh, but yeah it was just so such a geek fest and nothing today even the plaid's a year away and uh look it's battery day to be expected however i would say they did a poor job, especially Elon on Twitter. Not that this is his job. Managing expectations. I was expecting to see Model S uh, refresh. We were hoping to see the Cybertruck come crashing on the stage with flames everywhere. And there was nothing like this. Uh, the only thing we got to do was drink every time they honked the horns on all those silly Model Ys <laughs> sitting in the parking lot. And so that made the presentation bearable. But we didn't even see the cars on the presentation. So it, was, it wasn't until it was over and... And uh, we finally turned off our screens and I looked at my phone and looked at Twitter. And I, you know, I, end up, I probably end up, same as you guys, following a lot of people who ended up getting in invites, the kind of the Tesla media who were invited to this uh, event. Sorry, invited at random. Uh, but the, the, the kind of those, those people that are making all that, that kind of content about the company were posting pictures being like, here's the quad and here's the roadster, here's the semi. Yeah. And I was like, that wasn't even a cutaway shot. The only cutaway shot of the production team, which was pretty terrible, Tesla. Maybe try better next time because the sound was awful and the and the camera was shaky and it was just it was poor. Maybe they just uh, did it themselves and was like, who can hold a camera? But the the production values of that show were just nowhere near a Tesla product launch. And so everything that they had the trademark for, which is whipping people up into a frenzy of excitement and then really delivering on that, of it, being, being able to explain something very difficult in a very easy way, like we're gonna conquer the truck market. Here it is. Looks crazy, but this is how we'll do it, and everyone understands. 
They did, that's their trademark, and they just didn't do it. And so, that, but there wasn't even a cutaway of the vehicles. So I was looking at the social media afterwards, and the stage was flanked by vehicles. Um, right. And it was flanked by cars lined up in sexy cars. So it was S3, right. X, Y, and then what, you know, uh, the, 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 and then the rest, right? And then it's, and you think they, they so weren't focused on that side of it. Uh, right. I genuinely thought they were going to be like, at the end of the presentation, and all of these vehicles you see here, like all of these, these seven vehicles, all have them inside right now. And there was none of that. Right. There was none of that. Um, no, that sort of that that P.T. Barnum show stuff. Uh, it was. It was. It was. I, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I liked it. It was nerdy and geeky, uh, but I understand why people were let down by it. Well, I. I... I'd like to comment on that. We had a com. We were we were talking to this effect during the live stream, like you know, commenting that it was a little disappointing. And somebody posted in our live comments, "Guys, right. it's battery day!" <laughs> like really big. So that's my answer to that. While I wholeheartedly agree with Martin, it would have been much more entertaining. It would have generated a lot more interest and excitement if. You know, we were, he rolled out a roadster, or you even had video of a roadster drive, you know, driving and semis rolling down the highway. This was battery day. They were there to talk about batteries. They talked about batteries, yeah. real technical, geeky. They got into the weeds with battery technology. Um, maybe I'm just a boring guy. I liked it. I like to hear what they were talking about with you know the the, the these new cells and how they're even going to be trying to source new materials and breaking new ground. So I almost think um, it would have been uh, kind of fake if they did all that. And then like from the last five minutes, they're, you know, they're like, here's what we have, you know, look at the cars and like all that would have done was yay. And then geez, keep hitting my arm. Keep, yay. And maybe, maybe push the stock up. I don't know. Um, I don't own Tesla stocks. So I really don't care what their stock yeah, price is. Um, but, but we, you know, we, we, we got what we were, what we were sold. This was, this was battery day. This wasn't Tesla day to lay out our, 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 our um, path for, uh, you know, the next decade. This was battery day and we got battery. So um, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm totally fine. I wish we had, uh, as Martin and Kyle both talked about, some more information on the charging uh, of these new cells. That, that was the part that was missing. We should have heard, you know, and, and, you know, model three and Y can accept up to 250 kilowatt. Now these new cells can take 350 kilowatt or something that we could wrap our hand around uh, and, and say, okay, they're better in just every way. You know, it, you know, what if, you know, they're better in all these ways, but they can only take 200 kilowatts, you know? So, you know, which I doubt is the case, but I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, if if it was if they were um, uh, marketably better in uh, higher charging rates, I, I would think that they would have dropped that. Um, the fact that they didn't makes me think maybe you know there's nothing special about the charge rate on these new cells. But, but we'll see. Yeah, this is lots of questions. Uh, one mm -hmm. other question is about the whole the kind of underpins the feasibility of this whole project is uh, the lithium supply in in uh, Nevada. They say they have like ten thousand acres. Uh, under contract to extract lithium from these clays um, and using a uh, an acid-free saline extraction, so basically NaCl, uh, sodium chloride, or table salt. And But that's something that no one's done before. And they say there's enough lithium in, in Nevada to supply, you know, the, the country, the whole United States worth of electric vehicles, you know, which is like a lot of lithium. But, yeah, there's like, uh, there's like battery supply specialists, you know, just a little doubtful about the feasibility of that whole, you know, it kind of underpins this whole project, you know, in a way like lithium supply, because they, they want to produce like a ton of batteries over the next 10 years. Um, yeah, but, uh, let's see, let's, but let's talk about the, um, the plaid model S for a little bit. Um, well, actually, did, to start, did anyone want to say anything about the twenty-five thousand dollars vehicle? Uh, they they announced it would be out in like three years. It's three years away. We'll see if they ever do right. it. I expect. <laughs> I, I was I was myself a little disappointed that it's twenty-five thousand dollars car and not a twenty thousand dollars car. I know it's. I know for me. 
I always have a tough time with this because think about how cheap used Model 3s already are and then how cheap they're going to be and just they'll be 10 grand in a couple of years. But, but, but just, I don't know. I, I guess the warranty and the cost replacement, but the cars don't really break. I mean, we've seen some high mileage Model 3s at this point. I'd say it's a low risk. Even if you find one with 200,000 miles on it, that has a long way to go. Um, and you'll probably buy one for 10, 15 grand if Model S has any indication because they're already in the teens uh, for, for used Model S with 85 kilowatt hour packs. Uh, but yeah, if you want a new car for 25 grand, then sure. I, well, with electrification, there's going to be a lot of people um, buying electric cars over the next 10 years. And I think the, the used market will stay pretty tight. And so I think, uh, you know, a, an affordable uh, mass market vehicle should do pretty well, even if it's, you know, even if there's used Model 3s in that same kind of range. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, but let's talk Plaid for a second. So this was kind of like the big product announcement. A Plaid Model S looks the same, but the, uh, but they showed it. Um, they say it has 520 miles of range, uh, zero to 60 in under two seconds, a sub eight second quarter mile, which is just nuts. And all of this for like $139,000. Kyle. Is this is this impossible? No, I mean it seems reasonable. It's certainly a lot less. I I always use this. Um, two years ago, twenty seventeen, I think Model S was most expensive. You could sticker one up to one hundred and sixty five thousand dollars or more for a P one hundred D. This is significantly less and has significantly better specs than that car. I think it's very well priced. It's extremely competitive given someone uh, cross shopping an M5, an Audi RS7, whatever else they're going to be looking at. And it's just going to blow away everyone. And this is what we needed. The thing here that I'm slightly disappointed in is we didn't get any geeky stuff of how this car is put together. And I think it's truly because they just don't know. All they did was take the same exact looking Model S. They put some big numbers on there to you know, blow loose it away and then uh, call it a day. Like I said, I, this is not a thing. People are already like, oh, I bought a plaid model S. No, you put a reservation for something that you won't know what it looks like in a year from now. So, uh, I hope to see over the, this next year, a, uh, a much more of a focus on performance. Those plaid cars we saw going around in the Nurburgring had those fender lips, had real nice meaty tires, had carbon ceramic brakes, had a whole bunch of stuff that would make this tangibly better than just another fast, fast Model S. So, uh, you know, it's basically a P100D that they turned up a little bit. That was already faster than most people needed. So it's it's not that exciting, I think. I think um, what Lucid's doing is really exciting because it's new and they told us about the technology and they went in depth on how it's put together. This is truly what it comes down to. Just some intern put some numbers on a screen and said, yeah, you can order it and we'll figure it out later. Well, it, it has to have the tri motor. That I mean, that part has to be in place in order to get like a sub eight second quarter mile. I mean, it has to have. Well, at least I, I don't sub, actually sub nine, think you need nine. those three motors to get less than the uh, the quarter mile time. You can do it with two and on a different car, but we know for sure this one has the tri motor set up. It will likely have torque vectoring in the rear. Um, you know, we're we're seeing quarter mile time of less than nine seconds, zero to sixty in under two seconds range over five hundred and twenty miles. Nothing is we have tested, we know. Uh, and and that in car footage of it driving around Laguna Seca, that's cool. But that's not the production car. I don't know. I hate to be such mm. a downer on this because I love to see performance-related EVs. But I really wish there was something tangible in any of this uh, this plaid stuff. And and right, I know it's going to come. And I'm going to be so hyped about it when it does and when we get it out on track and drifting around. I just don't know. Uh, I don't want to basically get my myself hyped up for the next year waiting for this thing because uh, we don't even know what it's going to be like. Right. And even though it has these like great numbers, I mean, it looks the same and it looks like we'll have the, like the same interior, which, you know, it's, it's fine, but man, people like, like new things, you know, with, when you're talking about this kind of money. And so they have a choice between this or paying a bit more and getting the Lucid Error. And now we've seen the Lucid Error tri-motor performance do a, a its quarter mile the other day. And it, it's not as good as, it's not as fast as what they claim the Plaid does. It didn't show us the Plaid doing under eight, nine seconds, but the Lucid Air did like a 9.2 something seconds. It's on the inside of these, you can see the video. 
which is great. And plus, but and you also get all the, um, the you know nice new interior, a very luxurious feeling vehicle. Tom, what do you think about that comparison? Well, you know, th- th- on on the plan, don't forget. Th- Tesla's been talking about this for like a year and a half now, yeah. and now it's still a year away, and it's just a, a, a modification of an existing car. It's not like, you know, a, a totally new car. I was over in Germany this week or last week of last year, sometime in the middle towards the end of September, driving the Taycan uh, from Copenhagen to Hamburg, Germany. That's right. We were in Germany at the yes, same time. It, right. For the for uh, the Frankfurt Motor Show, then I came back right. the following week to do the Taycan press drive. And that's when Tesla, because the Taycan was doing their media test drive, Tesla mm-hmm. shipped the, the, the plaid car over Nuremberg. And, you know, as it famously broke down, and I remember we were having dinner with all the media that night uh, as after the day of driving the cars, everybody gets together and has dinner and just talks about the cars. Everybody had their cell phones out showing the video of the Tesla being towed away, you know, as we just finished up driving 500 miles in a Taycan. Um, and uh, that, that everybody got qu- quite a bit of a, a, a laugh out of that. You know, the, m- many of the entrenched automotive journalists aren't huge fans of Tesla. They're fans of the company. I mean, uh, the cars, but not necessarily the company because they, we get very little from them. Like there's, they don't never organize test drives. It's very hard to get any information out of the company. So, you know, sitting down at dinner with a whole bunch of automotive journalists, they were all giddy over the fact that the Model S broke down and had, and had to be towed away. Anyway, I digress. Um, So that was, you know, that was a year ago when it was being track tested. And now it's another year before you're getting it. So you know, I don't know why it's taking so long, you know, and now, and then you're talking about Tesla saying a $25,000 car in three years, but yet it took them two and a half years to modify an existing car to make it a little quicker. Um, so I don't know. Um, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on with the plaid program. I, I, I'm really disappointed that we didn't hear, you know, you can order it now and you'll be getting deliveries by the end of this year, you know, by the end of next year. So that's obviously way on the back burner for Tesla. It's not something that they're really putting a tremendous amount of effort and money into engineering or or the car to be here already. Right. Hmm. I feel like the, uh, uh, lost my train of thought. Um, but I think I feel like the uh, cell, the battery cell design, and all everything that's surrounding that. You know, just uh, a new production method, a new cell, a new production method. I think it's taken a lot more time and and focus than they had really anticipated. I think they've changed maybe the strategy uh, behind the the, the plaid uh, battery. You know. Uh, so yeah, but it's it's actually pretty amazing that they if you if you watch the video you can see they all the machinery they developed themselves to to make this new cell inside this factory like it's it's pretty amazing to watch because there's no tablet there's a tablet design so before when they were making the cells you know the machines that are winding all, all the the uh, the anode cathode on everything onto the spools they had to stop and start stop start start and but now with no tab it, you know everything's in constant motion there's there's no stopping of that machinery and you know, there's some clips of it happen working in the in the video there and it's you know pretty intense this the thing they've kind of had to dream that up and create it over the last couple of years I thought it was what was interesting as well about that. It was around that time, or maybe it was in the investor bit, uh, the first chunk. But anyway, it was around the the the, the gigafactory production that they mentioned that, that that new machinery, which has been, I think it was a South Korean company made those machines for them. Um, that machinery has been shipped to the pilot line, which on the revision four. And then I think Drew said that by the time they get to about revision six, they'll be ready for those machines to be shipped to Giga shanghai berlin and then austin when it's made that's before they build their own factory somewhere in uh, in north america and so then you think well berlin isn't built yet and we know they're going to be, be making cells in berlin that's going to be finished next summer are the first cells they build in berlin going to be these ones it have to in- be but think. it would make sense and that's and then you think well the first cars coming out of berlin next summer the Model Y. 
So if the first cells they're building in, if they're going to ship these 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 new Revision Six machines to Berlin, and they're going to make cells in Berlin, and the first cars next summer from Berlin are the Model Y, and Elon has said a few times, "Look, the car's going to look the same from the outside, right. but that Model Y is going to be an entirely different car." Was he talking about the cells? Because that's not the time frame that he, you know, a Model Y shipping out of Germany next summer is not. We'll finish the pilot line. So there's so many bits that still need to be joined up. Uh, maybe I'm just full of conspiracy theories today, but I do think it's going to happen quicker than than Elon was really letting on to his his, his battery making competitors. And who would have thought only a couple of years ago that Tesla's typical competitors that we thought were the other car companies, maybe a few solar companies, were actually Panasonic, LG Chem, CATL. They are the new competition to Tesla as well as all the car companies. It's amazing, really. I think um, at the end of the quarter, so probably like a, a month from now, we'll, we'll get this information out, uh, during the, like the, the call with investors where, where people can ask a lot more questions and kind of nail down what these production targets and the, you know what, what technology is going to be in these vehicles and what the timing of it all. You know, Hopefully, all, all get, gets nailed down. But uh, we should yeah. move along unless anyone's got anything else they want to mention about this. No, okay. So the other big news this week is also huge. Uh, the day after Battery Day, Volkswagen officially launched the ID4, an all-electric crossover with 250 miles of range. It looks pretty smart design-wise and costs initially uh, $39,995, so 40 grand. Uh, that's before the $7,500 federal tax credit and local incentives, uh, depending on what state you're in. And this will be available in all 50 states. Uh, you could pay less than $30,000. Uh, that's the rear wheel drive version, but still. Kyle, what do you think? Is this a uh, Hyundai Kona killer? Oh, this is almost an <laughs> everything killer. Uh, actually, no, I think Volkswagen has nailed it here. Uh, first off, the design, super happy, looks premium. Uh, it, it's true Volkswagen fun again. They're going back to the days when they had those great commercials of of unpimped the auto and everything. It's They're going back to their fun roots. They're putting the retro logo on the front of it now. They have the play and pause buttons on the, uh, on the pedals. I think it's great. Um, you know, price point wise, can you beat this thing? So you're getting an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack, roughly 250 miles EPA range, and it's going to be 39.9 before the federal tax credit. And then in states like Tom in New Jersey, he gets an extra five grand off and oh, by the way, no sales tax. So like, how can you afford not to buy one of these things if you're an Uber, if you drive around a lot? Um, and the kicker here is three years of free unlimited charging on Electrify America. Now that adds up. I did a calculation. If you drive 15,000 miles per year, on Electrify America uh, charging, it saves you roughly six grand over your three year period. So now all you gotta do is just stop in at one of those stations, take the free juice, why not? Of course you'll charge it home for the most part, but uh, this is adding up to be an incredible value. I would say the best value in the entire electric space. Uh, I would say it's better than Model Y of course, which is like 12 or $15,000 more than this car. And the Model Y makes sense if you're going on a ton of trips and you like the Tesla infrastructure um, with the supercharger network, but this has great ADAS. I think they, they nailed it here. This is great. And um, I think we'll see uh, a way huge construction uh, constraint on this car. They will eventually be built in five plants around the world, two in Europe, two in China, one in Chattanooga, Tennessee, right here. And... Um, that car that's being built in Tennessee will optionally have a 55 or 62 kilowatt hour battery pack. They're not sure what they're going to put in it yet, but it'll be $35,000 before tax credit, before state incentives. They got it. What do you guys think? I'm curious. I, I would just, you know, the 82 kilowatt hour pack uh, size, that's gross. It's 77 77 net. usable. So Yes, so that is a five kilowatt hour buffer. So they're not going to be telling their customers like Tesla customers, oh, don't charge it too high just in case. This is a car for the masses. Charge it to 100%. It's fine. We got you because they'll be looking after the battery pack safety at the top and the bottom. People will run this down to one or two miles left and then forget to charge it for a couple of days. And it's not going to kill the battery. So uh, there's a good size buffer on this. But I don't believe the range. I don't believe it at all. Because so you don't think it's, it's going to get low. too, too low? You... No, it's too low. It's too low. Okay, a set, a hold 70... on. 
77 kilowatt hour pack on a car that looks pretty slippery. Not that big. It's smaller. Remember, it's smaller than the Y. By quite a distance, it's smaller than the Y. Yeah. Dimensionally, uh, even if you got 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour, which is which is pretty conservative, that's still 269.5 miles. So say 270 miles. Now the WLTP range of this is 323. And although there's a delta, there's an offset between WLTP and EPA, I think EPA is more accurate, by the way, why in here in Europe do we rate it as 323? And yet the number they gave on the US presentation was 250? Right. They're lowballing. I can they share. Are... Go on. Okay. I've been driving an Audi e-tron, which is made by Volkswagen Audi Group, which gets 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour. Volkswagen Ooh. Group has a unique skill of making cars especially inefficient. <laughs> <laughs> well done there. But, but, no, I think they're really actually, uh, I think just like Taycan, this car will suffer the same fate. We're on the highway. Taycan's rated at 199 miles US for a Turbo S, but you can get 260, 270 miles out of it on the highway. And it's all about how they're run through the EPA testing and uh, Jason Fenske and Engineering Explained has a great video that goes through each of these things and basically Volkswagen Group doesn't really it traditionally pay to have the EPA go through more of these stringent tests therefore that Model S and Lucid are optimized for all of those tests this car I agree with you Martin will go farther than its 250 miles predicted range um, with that battery pack size however I think it is smart to rate it at 250 it is again EPA giving the rating not Volkswagen it's an independent rating um, mm. but that that's why they're probably being conservative because they've seen such a huge hit with Tycon, but real world will go farther. LG Chem pouch cells in this coming from Germany, but then when the Chattanooga plant spins up, there'll be SK Innovation cells. So the, the actual technology in it, you know, both of those are, are, are best in the business cell makers. And so that side of it's all fine. Charging speed's 125 kilowatts. Uh, yeah, I think that's reasonable. That seems all right. That's all right, isn't it? Like, not, not and, for super Tesla nerds that want every last bit of peak power, but. You don't really care, you know, if you're if you're buying an ID4, 125 is good enough, right? Yeah, and it'll probably hold it deep into the pack if we yeah, if we have Tycon yeah, and we'll, Etron we'll, yeah, to yeah, 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 to yeah, yeah. base upon. So, I think that's yeah. fine. Yeah, how how long it holds the charging rate is something that many people we talk about it frequently here. Many people don't really understand. Uh, I think this is going to charge just fine and based on the Volkswagen Group's charging curves on their on their other vehicles. And you know, one of the things I got a chance to talk to a few of the Volkswagen representatives about this. The interesting thing is they they made it a point to say that they weren't um, really matching their uh, say the specs uh, against a Model Y or a Mach E. They they didn't go after the zero to sixty times in under five seconds, which so many people are doing. They see this as a Toyota Rav Four Honda CRV killer. This is what the, those are the vehicles that they're putting this up against. They flat out come out and say we're not we're not trying to cannibalize. Ca Tesla and, and Mustang Mach-E, Hyundai Kona, fine, let them, let them sell all the vehicles they want. This is an ice killer, and that's what we made it for. Uh, you know, it's only 201 horsepower, the, the rear-wheel drive version. It's, it's going to go zero to 60 while they didn't release the figures in mm, 7.8, maybe 8 seconds, somewhere around there. It's, it's not going to be uh, really quick, quicker than that. Uh, which is more than fast enough for the for the Rav4 uh, Honda CR CRV mm. people. Volkswagen sees this vehicle, the ID4, as their Model T of the 21st century, and they've literally came out and said that. May, as Kyle said, made in five factories around the world. This is their ID brands mass selling vehicle that they literally want to sell millions of, and uh, I think they did a really good job with it. And, uh, and with this price point. The different trim levels that they have, especially Kyle mentioned in 2022 when Chattanooga, Tennessee comes online here in the U.S., this is going to be available, albeit with a smaller battery pack, for $35,000. And as Kyle also mentioned, here in New Jersey, you get the federal tax credit, $5,000 cash on the hood, zero sales tax. This is like a $22,000 car out the door in, uh, in, in New Jersey. How does that not just 
beat the hell out of uh, out of the ice competition. The Volkswagen and nailed free it charging and, and free, free and free charging. charging. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, it's like um, so. You know, but one of the things we haven't talked about an interesting feature on this car is it has rear drum brakes. Like, <laughs> right. like, who, who, like, like, when's the last time we talked about drum brakes? Uh, never, you know. But um, and Volkswagen explained it. You know that it's not just a cash deal like oh they'll save ten dollars a car uh, there there is savings on that but it, it's not simply that simple what they said was that the drum brakes actually have lower rolling resistance than the disc brakes and that the fact that right. they hold up better in for over long periods of non-use like on uh, many true. so you know you got i mean it saves money they're probably better in the long run for uh, you know for, for longevity. It, 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 let's face it; these, especially rear brakes on an EV, don't get used that much. And yeah. then um, the, you know they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna perform. They'll make the car more efficient over the lifetime, albeit probably very small uh, increase in efficiency. But there's no reason not to use them. So well, and if I'm, you want to get if you want to get real nitty gritty about it too, my smart car has them. I'm actually very pleased with the braking performance on that car. Um, but it will <laughs> yeah. contain the uh, brake dust the inside of the design. housing as well. Uh, so smart, it's technically smart. more efficient uh, or sorry, more uh, green for the environment. I heard right. that Kyle, but then right. don't you have, you have to clean them out eventually. Yeah. I mean, well, when, whenever uh, you replace them, well, yeah, the, okay. you can collect the the particles in the bottom of the the drum, basically, and right. then Home at the said, service hey. center, they're just going to knock them together like steel drums, and they'll fly into the air at that point. <laughs> oh, great! <laughs> uh, but have you actually been inside it, Tom? I know you got a, a, a special kind of come this way from VW before everybody else. But with COVID and stuff, were you allowed to get inside and touch and experience it, or was it just a presentation? Uh, I was able to get inside and sit oh. down for a oh. very brief period of time. Didn't learn much. Um, it was, it, it was kind of, there was a problem with my, my time slot, which I don't really want to get into. I had the wrong <laughs> address was sent to me on my invitation and I was like two miles away from where it was being held at in Brooklyn. Oh, and, uh, so, and, and everything was so structured time-wise because of COVID. It was like, if you get there 20 minutes late, well, that's, you know, this, nobody's getting pushed back, but I do have some news. I'm going to get, I'm going to be able to drive one next week. Oh, okay. That's, that, so that's cool. going to be interesting. But uh, just cool. uh, really quickly, like, so you sat in it and just like, what was your general impression? Uh, I, I, much more um, premium feel than the ID3. Very yeah. similar yeah. to the ID3, like as far as how everything was laid out. It has the uh, the BMW i3 sh gear sh selector yeah. knob on the steering <laughs> right. wheel, yeah. just like the, I mean, uh, that, you know, that, that that's cool. Um, yeah, you, you could probably zoom in. I don't know if you can, but in any event, um, it, it felt very familiar. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Uh, but any event, so. nice and comfortable. The material, it wasn't all hard plastic. It's pla there's, there's a fair amount of plastic, mm. but it didn't feel cheap plasticky. I didn't like the door panels have this white, um, uh, the armrest is white. That looked a little cheap. I don't know if we have any pictures of that. Um, and uh, it kind of made me feel a little Chevy Bolt ish. There you go, there uh, on that last picture. You see okay. the, the white, uh, the white on the door panel. Um, oh, uh, okay. It, I'm sure no, no, that yeah, would probably yeah, change it, depending it, on trim. It would, but the, I, I've seen it on a couple there of different. Right. They're right there. Yeah. There. Um, yeah. So that that is, there. That, okay, it that just kind of stood out yeah. and looked and felt cheap to me. Other than that, everything else felt really great. It was laid out well. Seats were super comfortable. Um, I loved the, the the display, the driver's display. I, I, I definitely think that that was uh, a good move for them to do this. Everything seemed well. I'll have a little bit more on it once I get to drive it, but um, this this car, this is Volkswagen's um, really big numbers play here in the ID line. I think this is going to be a winner for them. I agree. I agree. Yeah, those white. It's weird. Those white the armrests. They're they're black in the back seat. And, and it's yeah, just... and also I, I know white steering wheels are just generally <laughs> even. You can clean leather. Uh, yeah. And there's no non-animal version of this, by the way, which I don't know if anybody cares about that. But uh, the leather bits, anyway, you can clean. But still, white steering wheels, generally a bad idea. Absolutely. Oh, Martin, I have some info on that. Oh, 
Go on. On your leather wrapped steering wheel for Go animal on. freeness. Go on. If you don't get driver assistance, you can get an animal free steering wheel. Uh, but oh, you can okay. only if you get driver assistance do you need the leather for capacitive touch. But their engineers are working on a solution to provide animal free solutions for the capacitive touch sensor. Isn't that mm -hmm. interesting? That. And this is just a small thing, but I really like that mood lighting. You can see that it's like a blue line going alongside the but dash. That changes. And... That changes, right? Right. That's, that, it's a choice of like 16 million colors or something ridiculous. Yeah. There's also a light. Um, you can't see it in this picture where the windshield meets the dashboard along the top. Mm -hmm. There's a long LED strip that... Uh, changes like when you put it in drive and I I, I wasn't yeah. really able to to use it there and I I, I couldn't really get clarity on how that's not going to be distracting because it's yeah. it's really up in your line of, of vision but they promise it's not hopefully when I get a chance to drive it I'll get a little mm. um, uh, sense of how that works and what I don't even really know what functions it provides it has something to do with navigation um, it might even, if you change lanes, it might light up in the corner of the direction you're going in, but I have to get more information on that. So cool. this is supposed to be on sale. This is going to be available to buyers like this year, by the end of the year, it's going to be in, in dealers to ships, right? Yeah. At the, and that's the first edition, which is sold right. out in sold eight out. hours. That was, it's wow. like 40, 43, nine, nine, five. Uh, then the regular version is 40,000. And then there's going to be an all wheel drive version with 302 horsepower coming out next year. That's I think 43 right. or 44,000. Then eventually in 2022, we've got the vehicle coming from Chattanooga and that's going to be the $35,000 version. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that extra hundred horsepower and all wheel drive will, will give it a decent um, zero to 60 time. I'd like to see a, a version of it capable of doing like five, I think five seconds is a, is a really super quick amount, but not, you know, but not, without going like overboard, you know, cause it's not a sports car. It's like a, you know, yeah, actually I would, uh, I, I would comment on this since I've been driving a Volkswagen group SUV, uh, in the e-tron, I think I've floored it twice on the street. Right. I just cruise around. Yeah. It's so comfortable, but, and that car is like six point something seconds, zero 60. It's not fast. But when you juice it, when you put your foot into it and sport with the boost, it goes fine. But uh, I would say Volkswagen's taking the right approach, not chasing zero to 60 times and just chasing adequate power. And on paper, it'll be faster than their ICE equivalent. Um, I, I agree 100 percent. I, I, I disagree with you on this one, Dom. I do not believe we need a five second ID four. period. Uh, you know, six. 6.5, 6 7, 7.5 for the base versions is more, this is a family hauler. This isn't a, uh, sure. a, a let's take it on, on on Kyle's track and, right. and, you know, which is fun, you know, and, and, and pound it. Um, this is meant for the masses. And, you know, most of the people I, I, I can imagine that would be driving this families with kids that they, they really have no need for something that goes under five seconds, zero to 60 period. Right. I just know, you know, like guys, anyway, I, know, I think women actually make most of the buying decision when it comes to vehicles and families, but I know guys love good acceleration and that will sell them on a, on a kind of test drive, you know? Yeah, but that's a really good point. The test drive, wow, does yeah. come with acceleration. It is a good point. But 6.5 seconds, zero to 60 is oh, wow. That's plenty. That's plenty. Is, yeah, is, really. is, is wow uh, to yeah. me. So, you know, honestly, I don't think they should chase that. Leave that to Tesla. Leave that to Mustang mach -E. I love the fact that Volkswagen, it went so much out of the way to say, look, look, they can sell as many cars as they want. We're happy for them. We're going after the RAV4 and the CRV, which sells tons here in the U.S. and, and, right. and Europe also. That's the market we want. And we put our vehicle up against it in every metric. This is a better vehicle. Let me let so, me let me be slightly de devil's advocate here. After we've all uh, had effusive praise for this car, the first edition has sold out in the US. But I mean, if you only have a couple on sale, you can sell out pretty quickly. How do right. you feel about the production numbers coming from Germany? The US plant won't be open for two more years. I'm just worried that this is going to be another EV that if they made them available to US buyers in numbers would be a mega hit. They'll, they'll all be bought on lease uh, and that they gave the lease price as 379 with three yes. grand down, 10,000 miles. Like this is going to be, it would wipe the floor with so many ICE cars if they made enough. 
Right. And That's I'm, a really good point because uh, they're only starting with one factory for the world. They will be very much production constrained going yes. forward. How do you stop the dealers from jacking up the prices on them, putting you know ten thousand over mm. MSRP sticker stuff? I don't know the answer to that. They a Volkswagen legally cannot tell a dealer what final sale contractually uh, uh, to the the owner of the mm. vehicle is. They it, that's part of our dealer franchise laws here. So we'll probably see dealers jacking prices up on these. However, uh, we'll see them on the roads in smaller numbers. But I think given a two-year rollout, just like Model 3 took a while for them to come up, but of course Tesla doesn't put uh, 10 over MSRP since they're selling the cars in stock or from from manufacturer. Um, I think that it's not like this is a limited production. Uh, It's just, it's going to take a while to get them out and that's fine. So I I don't think... um, It'll be a huge deal. I think we'll just wait a little bit longer, a year or two, and we'll see a ton of them around, and they'll all be twenty-five grand or whatever people buy them for after tax credit. It'll be great. But I think it's a great opportunity to buy one as soon as you can. You could probably drive it for six months and sell it for what you paid for it. Uh, I really think yeah. that the used market's going to be so strong just because of the demand for this car. Well, I, I think uh, the used market's going to be strong for quite a while. What, what was that, Tom? Sorry. No, yeah, I was going to say, I totally agree with Martin. Um, Kyle, I think it, it's launching in two plants from the beginning, right? Zweikow and also in uh, China. Yes, it's going to yeah. be built in, yeah. in two plants uh, right from the beginning. So, And the fact that they're, they've are they announced this is going to be built in five plants um, gives you hope that while initially the first year, uh, I'm sure it's going to be supply constrained, it's not that wasn't built into this whole vehicle like we've seen manufacturers do with their other vehicles where right. right from day one, you knew they were never going to have as many of these as they could possibly sell. I think Volkswagen is understands that there's going to be a tremendous um, a demand for this car. So they're putting it in five factories. They can't do that overnight. So I'm, I'm going to cut them a little slack on that. Uh, will it be gouged in the beginning? Probably, but that that'll subside. And uh, hopefully the, you know, once the factories all come online, they'll be able to uh, make them in, in crazy uh, numbers. Well, Dealers can't get can't raise the price up too much because people will just do that Tesla stretch and and pay the you know the forty grand and get all wheel drive mm-hmm. and and a Tesla and you know yeah go get a Y or a Mach E yeah. or a Mach E yeah there you that's go. right yeah it's also coming so I was just saying that the um the, the so the used market for electric vehicles I think is going to stay super strong and resale values will hold really well for a while because. We have to electrification is definitely happening. So the big news out of California uh, this week is that they're considering banning gas cars and gas powered off road vehicles by 2035, which, you know, is putting the clock on things. Big news. What do you think, Kyle? Yeah, huge news. Uh, look, at, uh, we were talking about this little pre-show and Tom made a really good point. There's always a future governor that could walk back on this. However, right. it shows a clear step that California is going to be the most stringent in terms of EV demand uh, and, and forcing automakers to build electric cars uh, than almost any other country. Keep in mind, California, just Southern California sells more cars than all of Canada. So you have a incredibly large market in this one state that should be considered its own entire market. Um, And they have a huge influence as to what cars we actually get. You see manufacturers building cars just for the California market, Toyota Mirai being one of them in the US. And so, um, yeah, I I think this is huge news. Uh, I thought it was a little interesting that Ford was saying that they were like the only US automaker that's being so green. I was like, what, what? Tesla. And so I don't know, I guess they view them as a tech company. doesn't really matter. What really matters here is that the, uh, the gas powered vehicles are going to be banned by 2035, at least according to this executive order. Right. It's a big deal. I guess you have a similar thing going on over there in in the UK, Martin. Yeah. We've had a weird thing happen here that that we said 2040, then it became 2035. And then somebody went on uh, a uh, radio talk show from the government months ago. Now, uh, one of those breakfast 
kind of slightly highbrow uh, uh, public service uh, phone-in programs. And the government spokesman said, well, we could do 2030. And the auto industry absolutely lost it because <laughs> there is a uh, 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 there is a, an association. It's effectively a lobby a lobby body, but effectively all the car makers uh, pay their, their subs fee. And okay. then this one body in the UK represents them. And, and so they call themselves, you know, they are the voice of the motor industry. And they came out and they were like, this is absolutely unthinkable can't be done of course there is one big manufacturer that doesn't pay to be part of this body beginning with t because they don't like to be part of any club that they could be in um and so but all the other car makers are part of it and so they were like you can't you absolutely can't do this they lobbied really really hard the government said okay we'll listen to you we'll take it all in, into consideration they came out this week and went no actually we think 2030 is a really good idea so that would be any car with a combustion engine in there's you, a three any- a plug-in hybrid as well it isn't that uh, unthinkable i mean it won't happen because it's nine years away but you know the government are suffering very very much with their re- their response to covid the polls are in the uh certainly the sort of the negative side to what they've ever been in terms of approval and so whether they mean this or not i think they will look for policies that have very high public approval to try and get back on the good side of voters um and this is exactly one of those things that that apart from the car industry who's going to complain we're going to make the air cleaner from 2030 so they're talking about that being an announcement it was going to be this week but then we've had covid kick off uh, and they had to do a special uh, sort of reaction to that and we've sort of locked semi lockdown again but they say before the end of the year they'll they'll actually publish that as we're going to pass this through law 2030 will be the last time you can sell a car with an engine in. And they're, they're talking about 15 to 18 years being the life cycle of those last cars sold. Right. So they've got an eye on 2050, uh, which, you know, when you put it like that, uh, that, that fleet, that stock of cars finally going to be scrapped, it's probably about right, you know? Well, there's a there's a thread on the Inside EVs forum that um, has a lot of these different areas because it's not just California thinking it. And there's a whole pile of, like, uh, municipalities and, and countries and provinces and you know that that are considering this like ice ban and and so i i think with california announcing this i think it puts a lot of pressure on oems to like uh, it just kind of makes things really more clear you know the time frame that this all has to happen i think jalopnik had an article out yesterday like an opinion piece saying that they should just do it like right away just ban them all right away but you know as much as i like the idea of electrification i don't see that, how that's even feasible with the charging infrastructure we have that would just like be chaos and you know california doesn't need more chaos but um, you i think if you circle round to where we started on the podcast <laughs> over an hour ago uh, was um was how how uh, the tesla battery day will impact the others so yeah know, tesla aren't well, going to be carrying the battery responsibility for powering the world on their own shoulders but what they have done is the boardrooms of all those, and whether they knew what Tesla was working on or not, the next day, they changed the game for everyone. And so by 2030, can we be powering long-distance, heavy-hauling vehicles? Yeah, maybe we can, if it, well, if, it, if it causes the, the rate of development of all their competitors to, to, go, to step up again. Well, bat- batteries are improving. I spoke actually to uh, uh, somebody at GM, a uh, high-level executive, uh, recently, and uh, we were talking about the 400 watt hour per kilogram mark that uh, I think Tesla will be approaching. It's like three, two or three years, I think they said. And so, so I threw that out there. So does GM and LG do they are, do they, are they looking at 400 kilo, you know, 400 mm-hmm. watt hours per kilogram as well? And if if so, can you can you reach that in five years? And it, it, here, it was like less. So. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not just Tesla that's, you know, chasing down, you know, huge gains in, in battery energy density, which will drive down prices. You know, the big the big boys are on this as well. At least some of them, maybe not all of them, but at least some of them are, right? So uh, we should we're really low on time, so we want to hit a couple of things really quickly. Um, so Lincoln, I want to touch on this because it's kind of important. There's a company called Link and Co. Uh, it's a Chinese automaker. It's part of the Geely Group, and they're about to debut its uh, zero concept all electric crossover at the Beijing Motor Motor Show. Uh, most listeners may not be familiar with this automaker, but it's owned by Geely, which makes this more interesting than it already is, because Geely is a, gi- a gigantic uh, Chinese company that also owns Volvo, Polestar, Lotus, 
Proton, which is that's a Malaysian, I believe, automaker. The London Electric Vehicle Company, which does the uh, uh, London taxis, uh, and the and Wan Chang, which is a, a commercial vehicle like a truck maker in China. Uh, they have a lot of other businesses well outside outside of the uh, automaking. But so, but this is interesting because the Lincoln Co. Concepts uses the Sustainable Experience Architecture or C. Uh, this is a basic platform, and it will be shared by all these other brands. And even be offered to non Geely brands, like uh, much like uh, Volkswagen is doing with its MEB platform, uh, using it for a number of in-house brands and also licensing it out to Ford and others. So, but this this platform can be fitted with a single, double, or triple motors, and even a range extender. Uh, we can get an idea about the abilities of this platform by looking at specs offered up by the concept. It's got a 435 mile range, but that's MEDC, so just consider a lot less than that, Let's say 300 miles or so. Uh, four seconds, zero to 60, which is nice. Tom, what do you think of this concept real quick? And how long do you think before Lincoln Co. comes to America? So, um, you know, it is, as you mentioned, it's 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 a uh, a Geely brand, Lincoln Co. Lincoln Co. It's their all electric brand. Um, they do make plug-in hybrids, but all the vehicles are electric. And what you said, the, the SEA, the Sustainable Experience uh, Architecture, is the big story yeah. about even bigger than this car, in my opinion. That is going to be the MEB of China. It is going to be used in so many different vehicles and licensed to other manufacturers to use. That's the, That seems to be the diamond in this car. That said, it looks like a great SUV, really beautiful. Specs are fantastic. Um, this is going to give uh, Model Y some some uh, some serious competition in China and Neo. So uh, you know, there's another one. And I tell you, these these Chinese manufacturers. You know, I, I I've done a lot with Xpeng. I've driven their cars. Um, they're becoming world class cars. This isn't just you know, oh, China is going to be China. No, this is going to be a global brand. This is coming to Europe. This at some point will probably come to, to America. Um, Lincoln Company. I mean, you know, the, the, the you know the the time the, the time of Chinese cars being stuck in China because they're lower quality is over. With electrification, China is is leapfrogging ICE, and they're bringing world class vehicles um, to the stage, and they're going to compete in the U.S. and Europe and. Watch out because this is for real. They're just one after another after another keeps 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 launching. And um, and now look, we saw in 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 other news, Xpeng just shipped their first 100 G3 uh, SUVs, compact SUVs to Norway. They just loaded them on the ship yesterday. So now the the Xpeng invasion has begun. Um, this is serious, and uh, you know we're going to be in four or five years. We're I think we're going to look around and say how this happened, uh, but it's going to happen. Right, I like this uh, this Lincoln Co. Comp car. I like the, the design language on, on other stuff. You know, I think it's spot on. And this kind of looks like a bit of a like a squashed eye pace actually on the side profile, but uh, I, I like the headlights a lot. Kyle, I want to say anything really quick about this. Uh, I just love Geely. Geely as a company. I think they're doing everything great, taking electrification really seriously, uh, buying up uh, existing automakers like Lotus, like Volvo, giving them free reign from the design language, supporting them with the money yeah. for the technology on the back end. Uh, design language on this car doesn't do it for me, uh, but I agree with Tom in saying that Geely loves uh, modular architectures so that you can take a, a system architecture or chassis, stretch it, move it however you want, and then build cars cars off of it. Uh, I agree with Tom saying this will be the MEB of China. So pretty cool. Okay. I just got a couple of items I want to mention real quick before I close out. Uh, interrupt me if anyone wants to say anything about it. So uh, Nikola Motors, Trevor Milton is gone, the founder and uh, chairman, ex-CEO, and now ex-chairman of the board. He is out of there. The, the stock price has sunk from its $50 high of like a couple of weeks ago or last week when they announced their partnership with GM. And, you know, yesterday at close, it was like $19.10. So, you know, it's, and some are saying it's going to go to zero. Uh, he's being replaced by Stephen Gursky, who is from GM originally and a GM executive. But man, it's not looking good over there. Uh, so it's something to keep your eye on. Uh, there's some, yeah, drop, drop by the Inside EVs forum. We have a, a Nikola section, and you know, we could talk about that there. Uh, so, also Daimler, uh, Mercedes, 
they have a they launched or oh, they're saying the mercedes-benz e actros long haul semi truck is going to be ready in 2024 with a 300 mile range 311 mile range which you know i, I feel like it's you know i kind of like the look of it it looks pretty sweet but it just seems like it's you know too little too late but you know 2024 we'll see how that matches up that's like a lot that's 200 miles fewer than the uh the tesla semi i don't know i think they, and and this uh daimler also they also own freightliner and, and fuso and other brands and they want to use this drivetrain or this powertrain in those other vehicles as well so yeah, i don't know i'm not sure if they're uh if they're looking at the right target anyway and uh, other also with uh sticking with mercedes the subcon subcompact crossover that is designed on and based on the gas powered gla the eqa has been delayed until 2021 um see uk deliveries are now going to start in the second half of 2021 so it's at least six to nine months behind the original plans it's supposed to be coming single motor front wheel drive and also a dual motor four wheel drive version and possibly an amg version down the road uh martin you want to say anything about that real quick since that's your part of your, your part of the world Looks like everything got COVIDed this year, but this one may be a little more than others. Shame, really, but um, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing more than the what was, you know, simply the EQC, which is all we've really seen from uh, Mercedes Benz. Um, uh, quick, luxurious, expensive, right. but we want to see more. All right. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, if you have any comments about any of the topics on today's show, you can comment on the Inside EVs podcast post the YouTube comment section or on the Inside EVs forum podcast thread. But actually, um, Kyle, we want to take some uh, questions from our regular watchers and listeners and things. We have a, we're setting something, something up for that. Yeah. So I think on shows going forward, we're going to bake into the end of the show when people are done with news we're just going to answer a few questions and i did a little trial of this without asking anyone i didn't realize we'd go on so long <laughs> so i'll just <laughs> i'm just going to go through really quick because a lot of these we've already talked about but i have a question for you dominic if you were to buy an suv in 2021 or cuv would you buy the id4 or the model y id4 is more in my price range i can't even think about buying a model y but I, okay so, uh, so yeah. id4 are there any three row battery electric crossovers coming out under 50 K? No. Uh, let's see any predictions on when we will see adjustments to charging curves on the existing Tesla fleet. Tom. Putting you on the spot. Oh, your oh, Tom's off. muted. You're muted. Tom's, he's got himself muted there. there Sorry go. guys. Yeah. Um, uh, no, we haven't heard anything about that. Uh, not, not, you know, I'm sure uh, it, it could be in the works with Tesla. All of a sudden they announce something, but no, unfortunately we don't have any news on, on when or if that's going to happen. Uh, and one last question that I think is really important, which is from a new podcast called grid connections, which I was on recently. Uh, it's it comes from, let's see, let me read it real quick. If charging networks did one thing to improve the charging experience, what would would you like to see yeah plug no, and charge no, no touch nothing just plug in and everything takes care of everything plug and charge so mine is just more stations because four right. is not going to be enough yeah that's true mm -hmm. that's it are we good cool. i think that's it yeah we answered we had a whole bunch but we got through most of it in the show and i don't want to take up too much more time no problem all right so don't forget you can find and follow our panelists on twitter tom is at tomalog uh, martin is at uh, EV News Daily, Kyle is at Out of Spec, and I'm Dominic Y. Click, click subscribe and tap that bell icon for notifications, and we'll see you all next week. Ciao.